Welcome to the Commander Congregation. Let's play. Chris starts the game by playing an island. He taps the island and he plays a soul ring. He taps the soul ring and he plays a dowsing dagger. As dowsing dagger enters the battlefield, it triggers and he gives the two zero two plants with defender to Dave. He passes the turn. Dave starts with a snow covered mountain, tapping it and playing a skull clamp. That's going to come in handy later, but for now, he'll pass the turn. Rick starts by playing a swamp and immediately taps that swamp into a Banehound. Banehound is one of his favorite creatures with lifelink and haste and immediately goes to combat, punches Chris for one, and gains one life. On Mikey's turn, he plays a mountain, taps it into Goblin Chirurgian. That's got an ability that lets him sacrifice a goblin to regenerate a target creature. He passes the turn. Chris plays an island for turn, taps all of his mana because he's been ramping like a fiend, and plays Jalira, Master Polymorphus, from the command zone. Dave plays a mountain for his turn, contemplates what he's going to do, and then plays Trailblazer's Boots, which will give an equipped creature non-basic landlock. Don't see that every day. Rick plays an island for turn, taps his mana, and plays Baleful Strix, another creature he loves for keyword soup because it thickens the broth with flying and death touch. As it enters the battlefield, he draws a card. Moving to combat, he attacks Dave, but Dave blocks it, and he gains his life anyway, because lifelink is good like that. Mikey plays a thriving heath for his turn, naming red as his secondary color. He doesn't really feel there's much else he can do, so he passes the turn. Chris plays a Fairy Conclave as his land for turn, which adds to his mana pool, and in a pinch can become a 2-1 blue fairy creature with flying. Then, he plays a Pristine Talisman, which lets him tap for mana and gain a life. Doing so, he equips the Dowsing Dagger to Julira. Moving to combat, he attacks Mikey with Julira, who lets the damage through. Dowsing Dagger transforms into Lost Veil, vale, adds to his lands, and he passes the turn. Dave plays a snow-covered mountain on his turn, and then he plays a Prying Blade. That lets the equipped creature create treasure tokens when damage goes through. This deck needs a lot of mana to work effectively, so hopefully this card pays off. Rick plays another forest as a land for turn, and then moves directly to his combat step where he attacks Chris, gaining one life with Banehound's lifelink. Mikey plays a Plains on his turn, and then he plays Glory Bound Initiate. Now as this creature attacks, he's able to exert it, which gives it plus one plus three, and it'll gain lifelink until the end of turn as well. Chris plays an Island on his turn, and then he plays Sharding Sphinx. This creature lets all of his artifact creatures create 1-1 one, one blue thopters when they deal damage to players. Let's see how this pans out. Dave plays a Mountain, decides not to play his commander, plays his Whisper Silk Cloak for later protection, and then he's gonna go ahead and pass that turn over to Rick. Rick's gonna play a Swamp, and then he's gonna cast his commander, Rayami, First of the Fallen. That's gonna exile creatures when they die, so instead of going to the graveyard, they're gonna be exiled with blood counters, and Rayami's gonna pick up any keyword abilities that they happen to have. Moving to combat, he attacks Chris with Banehound. Banehound is blocked, Rayami triggers, Banehound gets exiled, and Rayami picks up Lifelink and Haste. Haste isn't really important right now, but it's there, so there you go. Mikey plays the planes, then he casts his commander, Breon Stoutarm. This 4-4 Lifelinker's got an ability. Pay red, tap, sack another creature. Breon Stoutarm deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to target player. Fling your boys, deal your damage, gain your life. Move into combat. Mikey exerts Glory Bound Initiate at Chris, giving it lifelink, dealing some damage, and gaining some life. He passes. Chris plays Temple of the False God for his land this turn. 
moving right to combat. He attacks Rick with Sharding Sphinx. Rick doesn't block. Chris makes a 1-1 Blue Thopter. Here we go. He plays a Star Compass, then he passes the turn. Dave starts by casting a Snow-Covered Mountain, then he casts Valduke, Keeper of the Flame. At the beginning of combat on Dave's turn, Valduke is going to create a 3-1 Red Elemental Creature Token with Trample and Haste for each equipment and aura attached to Valduke. Those tokens are going to exile at the beginning of the next end step, so he's going to use them and abuse them. He attaches Crown of Flames to Valduke and moves to combat. In combat, Valduke triggers and he makes a 3-1 Elemental Token creature. Deciding not to attack, he skull clamps the token and draws two cards. Rick plays a forest for turn, sacrifices a land, then casts Harrow. Harrow searches up two basic land cards and he puts them on the battlefield. Then he casts Night Veil vale Predator, another keyword soup ingredient with flying, death touch, and hexproof. Mikey misses another land drop, so he casts Desperate Ritual for additional men. He casts Backdraft Hellkite, looks at the board state, and passes. At the end of Mikey's turn, Chris turns that Fairy Conclave into a 2-1 creature, then he polymorphs it with Jalira, and gets Inkwell Leviathan. That's a big boy. Going straight to combat, Chris throws Inkwell Leviathan at Rick and a Sharding Sphinx in the token at Dave. No blocks are declared. Sharding Sphinx triggers three times and three tokens come into play. Chris plays Brainstorm to adjust his hand a little bit. Hoping things are different in this game, Chris plays Nadir Kraken. He activates Jalira one more time, polymorphing the token that attacked, and he gets Stormtide Leviathan. What the hell? Dave plays a snow-covered mountain. Dave equips Whisper Silk Cloak and Trailblazer's Boots to Valduke. He doesn't sequence it right, but the table lets it happen anyway. They're so nice. During the combat step, Valduke triggers, three elementals enter, and he decides to skull clamp two, draw four cards, and let the third one fizzle. No attacks today. Rick plays a Bant Panorama for land, then he casts Death Sprout, targeting Stormtide Leviathan. Stormtide Leviathan is gone. Rick gets a forest into play. Mikey drops a planes for land this turn. Missed a bunch. Let's see if he catches up. As he moves through his phases, Rick cracks the Bant Panorama and gets a forest into play. Mikey casts Empty the Warrens and creates two 1 1 Goblin Token creatures. He passes the turn. On his upkeep step, Chris activates Jalira again and gets Archetype of Imagination. His deck's really going off this time. During his draw step, Nadir Kraken triggers. It gets plus one, plus one, and he creates a tentacle creature token. He casts a Nefalia Moondrake's return because he loves flying creatures. In combat, he swings seven damage towards Mikey, four damage towards Dave, and two damage towards Rick. Sharding Sphinx triggers, and he creates four more Thopters. Dave plays an Outpost Siege on his turn, choosing Dragons. This way, when those tokens leave the battlefield, they'll do something. He casts a Shuko, and equips it to Valdu. Gotta love those zero equip costs. Valdu triggers in combat, and creates three tokens. Dave recognizes Jaleer as a threat this time, Mikey says he can handle it on his turn. Dave attacks Chris with the Valduke and the tokens. Chris blocks with Nadir Kraken and Nefalian Moondrakes. 
Then he takes 7 damage from what's left over. Outpost Siege triggers, and Dave puts 1 damage on the Kraken, and 2 on Archetype of Imagination. Those creatures die, and hopefully that'll slow down Chris's board state. Rick plays a Field of Ruin for turn. Then he plays Helm of Possession, another sacrifice outlet that lets him take control of other people's things. Mikey casts Goblin War Drums to give his creatures menace. That means it takes two creatures to block one. Punking out and doing nothing about Jalira, Rick helps out by activating his Helm of Possession. He sacrifices Night Vale Predator, giving those keywords to Rayami, and he takes control of Jalira. Sadness on the stack, it resolves. Chris plays Maloku the Clouded Mirror. Another token generator that lets him bounce his lance. He's not using landfall triggers, so I don't know what's going on. He taps 8 mana into an ever-flowing chalice, so it'll tap for 4. He activates Moloku, bouncing a land to his hand. That creates an illusion token. And then Chris replays that land. Moving to combat, he swings Nefalia Moondrakes at Mike, Inkwell Leviathan at Rick, and Sharding Sphinx and Six Thopters at Dick. Mikey blocks, sacrifices a goblin, and regenerates Backdraft Hellkite. Other damage goes through. Sharding Sphinx triggers, and Chris creates eight more Thopters. What, eight? Eight's too many. Nobody likes this! This is not fun! Uh. Dave plays a mountain for land this turn. He casts Hammer of Nizam, which triggers as it enters and automatically equips to Velvet. Trying to ramp up, Dave casts a Worn Power Stone. In combat, Valduke makes four tokens. Realizing Chris is a major threat, Dave swings everything he has at Chris. Chris asks Dave if he wants to see something cool, but before Dave can say no, Chris activates Moloku, bouncing his non-basic lands so the Trailblazer's boots are ineffective. Valduke is blockable. 12 damage still gets through from that attack. Dave clamps the remaining token and draws two cards. Outpost Siege triggers, and Dave puts damage on Sharding Sphinx, removing that threat from the table. Rick plays Shared Summons, searching for two creature cards, revealing them to the table, putting them in his hand, and shuffling his library before passing the turn. Mikey gets another land drop playing a mountain, then he taps two for Cliffside Rescuer. No attacks, he passes. Because Chris bounced it as a land, he's able to replay Dowsing Dagger. It triggers as it enters, and he gives the plant tokens to Mikey this time. He tries to equip it to Inkwell Leviathan, but Inkwell Leviathan has Shroud. So he puts it on the Nefalia Moondrakes instead. Chris looks at his board, then he looks at Dave. Then back at his board, then back at Dave. Realizing Dave is too dangerous to leave alive. Moving to combat with absolutely zero chill, Chris swings flying lethal at Dave. Rick and Mikey look on horrified, nothing they can do. Dave is cut down and removed from the game. Good night, sweet prince. Dowsing Dagger transforms back into Lost Veil. On Chris's end step, Rick activates Jalira, sacrificing Baleful Strix. Rayami triggers, gets those keywords, and Rick polymorphs out Prime Speaker Vanifar. Rick plays Harbinger of Spring. This creature has protection from non-spirits. That's pretty niche, but it could just work. Mikey activates Breon Stout Arm, and he flings a goblin at Chris. Rick activates Prime Speaker Vanifar, 
sacrifices his Harbinger of Spring, triggering Rayami. So Rayami now has protection from non spirits, and Rick finds Dark Steel Sentinel. Rick plays Life's Legacy to draw some cards, and Rayami steals Vigilance and Indestructible from Dark Steel Sentinel. Avenging his fallen boy, Rick attacks Chris with his powerful Rayami. Mikey plays Dauntless Aven, a flying creature that lets him untap target creature when Dauntless Aven attacks. Moving to combat, he exerts Glory Bound Initiate at Rick. Realizing an attack on Chris wouldn't go through because of all those flying blockers, he flings the backdraft Hellkite at Chris with Brion. On Mikey's end step, Chris taps Pristine Talisman to gain one life. This card has done a lot for him this game. Chris plays an Umbral Mantle. This equipment lets him untap equipped creature, pumping it and letting him tap again. He equips Umbral Mantle to Julia. Chris polymorphs his tentacle and it becomes a sea rock monster. He then pays to untap Jalira. Then he decides to cast a myriad landscape for turn. He polymorphs again, but this time whiffs it and pulls out a mirror sire. That's karma for killing Dave early. Rick activates his Helm of Possession, sacrificing Vanifar, and takes control of Chris's Nefalia Moondrake. Now he has another flying blocker. In combat, Chris swings 13 damage at Mikey, 7 damage at Rick. Trying to end the game, Rick casts Nevenerals Disc. With no way to untap it, He's got to wait until next turn to destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. Then he plays Eldritch Evolution, sacks the Moondrakes, and pulls out Butcher of Malakir. Because he knows it'll connect, he attacks Chris with Rayami. Mikey's been frozen for most of this game, but he plays a Dwarven Miner. He activates Breon's Stout Arm again, and flings Glory Bound Initiate at Chris. He swings at Chris with a flyer, and Chris blocks with two tokens. Mikey then activates Breon one more time, and flings that creature at Chris. Chris plays Springjack Pasture. He polymorphs the Mirror Sire and it becomes Deceiver of Form. But it doesn't make the 1 1 token when it leaves the battlefield because of Rayami's trigger. Aldrazi are still kind of unfair. He untaps Julira and polymorphs again, this time getting a Tromocratus. Tromocratus won't do much for him now, so he untaps Julira one more time, polymorphs Tromocratus, and gets a Fibble Fib. What a whiff. Ha <laughs> ha. Deceiver of Form triggers as he enters his combat step, and he reveals an island on top of his library. Big fails. Chris swings everything he has at Rick, but because Rick's got lifelink, he only loses 16. Rick drops an island for turn. Moving directly to combat, Rick swings Rayami at Chris and Butcher of Malakir at Mikey. Chris has a trick though, and he plays Illusionist Gambit. Illusionist Gambit stops that combat phase and starts another one, but Chris can't be a target in this one. A single tear running down his cheek, Rick throws 10 damage at Mikey. Then he plays a Mole Drifter and draws two cards. Mikey plays Sunhome, Fortress of the Legion. 
This land can give one of his creatures double strike until end of turn. Because his creatures have menace, he swings all three at Chris, giving double strike to one that gets through. That deals three damage, and Chris is out of the game. At the end of Mikey's turn, Rick activates the disc, blowing up the board and starting things over. Mikey responds by flinging his last creature at Rick with Breon. Rick plays one more island, then he plays Beast Whisperer, letting him draw a card whenever he casts a creature spell. Then he casts Spawn to the Glorified. He moves to combat and attacks Mikey for five. Based on the current state of the board and the limitations of his deck, Mikey concedes the game. Rick wins two in a row.